WoW Remix, Mist of Pandaria in patch 10 to 7, level to 70 using special rules and loot. What? Relive epic, advent epic, epic adventures with an all new event arriving in 10 to 7 content update. WoW Remix, Mist of Pandaria. Experience the wonders of Pandaria anew, but with fresh new loot and almost unlimited power. Oh, sh. Remix is a time limited event. Uh, which allows players to re-experience the entirety of the Mr. Pand Pandaria expansion at an accelerated rate from level 10 through level 70. All loot has been completely overhauled and has powerful new effects, allowing players to shape their experience, power up and power on. Features include accelerated leveling and content, allowing you to take on nearly every quest, scenario, dungeon and raid. Create a new WoW Remix character starting at level 10 to adventure through the event up to level 70. A mountain of loot, get powerful items from everywhere, quests, chests, creatures, bosses, customizable items allowing you to power up as far as you can go to take on tougher content. Dude, so you can actually solo raid? Convert unwanted items into bronze, which can be used to upgrade items or purchase cosmetics. Keep what you collect. Take your collection of Transmog with you into the war within. It is available to everyone. No expansion purchase is needed, but a World of Warcraft description game time is required. Okay, 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 okay. Wow, Trial Accounts will also be able to experience this WoW remix without a subscription or game time through level 20. Man, they should not do that. Okay, so here we go. Accelerated leveling and content. With WoW remix, Mr. Pandaria, there will be no slowing you down, and you'll be able to take on nearly every quest scenario, dungeon, and raid right up, right out of the gate with accelerated leveling from 10 to 70. View the chart below for the availability of each type of content. Jade Forest, level 10 to level 70. Uh, Greenstone Village, Brewing Storm, Theramore's Fall, Temple of the Jade Serpent, Scarlet Hall, Scarlet Monastor Monastery, Scholomons. Level 20 to level 70, Valley of the Four Winds, Ka uh, Krasarang Wilds, and Five Run Landfall, Landfall Campaign, Ungu Ingu, Domination Point, Lion's Landing. All right, so you are basically, <clears throat> you can stay in one zone and level as high as you want, or you can, once you hit level 20, move on to the next, move on to the next, move on to the next. And then Heroic Raids will open up at level 70, Siege of Ogrimmar will open up at 60 to 70. Creating your new identity. Create a new modern World of Warcraft character to undertake your adventures in Pandaria. Collect a variety of powerful new items and transmogs, then take your transmogs with you when you continue your adventures in World of Warcraft, The War Within. Additional character slots will be available so that you have room for your newly fully, uh, fully leveled and fully geared hero to join you in your continuing adventures through the World Soul Saga. All remix characters created during the event will convert to a standard character to play within modern World of Warcraft at the end of the event. Dude, this is actually really cool. Just in terms of you can actually level a, a character to max level without like without having to do old school leveling, which is actually really cool from a leveling perspective for people that have alts or want alts of specific, uh, you know, maybe you want to try out a new spec. This is actually not a bad thing. We'll talk about what I like and dislike about this in a second. From the Realm Character Selection screen, players will be given the option to create a new WoW Remix character beginning at level 10, which will only be playable with characters taking part in the event. Characters in the selection screen, which are only available to play in the World of Warcraft Remix event, will have an icon next to the character. Once you've created your character, you'll begin your new journey in the Timeless Isles and meet up with the Infinite Dragonflight and Eternus, who will set you on your path. New loot, new you. In WoW remakes, players have the opportunity to collect a variety of items from just about anywhere. Quests, chests, creatures, bosses, and more. New customizable items will be yours for the taking, and each item slot has their own unique identity with spell gem sockets. These sockets come with exciting turbocharged new effects similar to trinkets. Each time you loot new items, you'll have the chance for powerful new upgrades, allowing you to push the limits further and faster than ever before with uncapped progression. As you progress, you'll gradually become more and more powerful as items also grant increased permanent stats. Here are just some examples of the types of gems you might find. Meta gems, Life Storm, Equip. Summon a storm, call down 5 bolts of lightning every 1 second. Each bolt inflicts 25,000 nature damage to an enemy within 30 yards. During the storm, 3 flowers grow around the caster. After 5 seconds, the flowers bloom. 
restoring 388,000 health and granting 1,720 haste to allies for 10 seconds. Fits in a meta socket. Thundering Orb. Transforms into a Thundering Orb, inflicting nature damage to enemies within th 30 yards of 4 seconds. While you are a Thundering Orb, damage taken is reduced by 50%, movement speed is reduced by 70%, and you are uh, immune to the loss of control effects. Oblivion Sphere. Coalesce an orb of pure void that increases critical strike damage taken by enemies within 15 yards by 50% for 10 seconds. After 4 seconds, the orb explodes, inflicting shadow damage. Um, primordial gems, you have stuff like Hailstorm, which binds uh, when you pick it up. Every three seconds, build a charge of Hailstorm upon reaching 10 stacks. Unleash hail on enemies within 50 yards. Yards, each impact inflicts frost damage and applies numbing cold. Numbing cold reduces the movement speed. Cold front, uh, your abilities have a chance to grant all allies a shield absorbing damage and applying numbing cold to all enemies within 50 yards. And then Wildfire, your abilities have a chance to inflict additional fire damage and spread Wildfire to a nearby inflicting fire damage. And then you have Tinker James. Um, grants a shield absorbing damage equal to 20% of your total health. Further, while you are above 80%, your attacks consume. Sunstrider Flourish, your critical strikes erupt in a fiery explosion, inflicting fire damage. All right, so basically, I'm not going to go through all of this because, you know, um, it's obviously just some of the items here. If I'm not mistaken, this effectively means that while you'll be, you know, a, a warlock or whatever, so it's one of two things uh, from what I can gather at least here. Either you roll a warlock and you get all of these extra things that you can, you know, that makes out your character, or you don't actually, it's sort of like Plunderstorm in that you don't have a class. Your class is basically built out by collecting these gems and these items and then making a class out of it. I'm not entirely sure. I, I kind of feel like that would be awkward and weird for a lot of people. It probably would be best if you could have a class and then... But then that would make some of these gems very awkward and also mean that some of these gems would not really be equipable. Just because, you know, for example, some of these are frost. It would do nothing to a warlock. And so a warlock would almost definitely want to pick up something like wildfire. Um, or even something like oblivion sphere. Because increased shadow damage for affliction warlocks at least. I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think this will be? Are you going to have a class? And then this is going to be extra abilities on top of what your class already does? Or is it like Plunderstorm? No class, and you just have to will become a standard character after the event. Shadius, yes, but remember, it could be a thing of you make a warlock, you go into it, but the warlock have basic abilities. So say, for example, you make a warlock, so your warlock has Incinerate and Immolate, but it has no other abilities. And so all of these other things that you get will give all of your abilities, right? So now you have this array of abilities. But then once the event ends, you actually become a warlock, like a normal warlock, just with all of these other things. Um, personally, I, I don't know. I can see something really cool on both. I guess if I'm if I'm a betting man, I would bet that you just get your class. So you get all of the abilities that your class have, and then these are just extra abilities on top of that. I love this. I love this for a couple of reasons. I think the biggest thing for me about this is again it shows blizzard trying to experiment trying to try something new something major but in such a way that it doesn't really affect the actual game so the people that are doing mythic plus this has no effect on them the people that are doing raids this has no effect on them this is just something extra which then allows them to take some of that stuff that they learn some of the lessons that they learn from this and eventually apply it into the actual game, right? So say, for example, something like Thundering Orbs, or let's say, for example, the meta gem system really works well. You know, so it, it actually works super well and players really enjoy it. You can see a world where Blizzard goes, hey, what if we try to include meta gems into the actual live retail game? And let's play around with that to give players, to make sure that, James actually increase the depth of your character 
and and you can actually build out your character to be quite unique based on the meta gems that you want to stack. I can see something like this working, and I love the fact that they're doing this. It's the same reason why I love Plunderstorm, because again, it gives play it gives Blizzard the opportunity to experiment with new things without it affecting the actual live game in such a way that you're almost definitely going to get people that complain. Now, what are the downsides of this? Well, in all honesty, really only one, FOMO. I so desperately wish that this wasn't, again, one of those timed events. It just feels really bad, especially if, you know, what if you're having a particularly busy month or two at work and you can't really play as much. Now you've missed out on the whole event and that really sucks, dick. And it's sort of my problem with timed events, and I understand why Blizzard does it. Blizzard really wants timed events to make it seem like an event, right? And everyone's coming together to play through this event. And while, yes, that definitely achieves it, it also sort of promotes, oftentimes, very degenerate gameplay, right? Like a lot of degeneracy within the gameplay. Because now you get people that is spamming hours and hours and hours trying to get everything done because they're afraid they might miss out on something rather than just what I would have preferred here is launch this as a new game mode. And it's just a game mode that people can continuously play through and they can continuously make new characters to level through. It is now a new type of, of leveling system because this reminds me very much of uh, what's that in, in Final Fantasy, they have something similar to this. Uh, what's it called again? Um, you have two places that's very similar to this, where you also get like stupidly powerful, and but it's only in that area, so the power doesn't actually transfer to the rest of the game. I think that would be much better. I, I don't like the, the fact that it is limited. I love the fact that it's never ending, so you can basically just keep getting stronger, at least theoretically. And hopefully we can see uh, Eureka and Boja. That's the that's the two, Shadius. Yes. This is perfect as Eureka. And the other thing that I love about this, like love, 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 love about this, is, well, man, there are so many old expansions in World of Warcraft, so many old zones, so many old dungeons, so many old raids that just, sit there right that is development hours that, that's millions of dollars that was spent designing all of that figuring it all out planning it all out and it just sits there no one does anything to it and this is actually a very clever way of bringing some of that old shit back because while yes you know it is just an event and it isn't actually in the real world it's still there and it, it makes sense so I would love to see Blizzard maybe do more of this. You know, maybe eventually have a Cataclysm version of this and maybe even a Wallet of Draenor version of this. Um, even a Legion version of this could eventually be really cool and players could really enjoy playing through it. Again, Blizzard, if I can give you one bit of advice, remove the timed event, please. No one cares for timed events. They're shit. They feel really bad. Uh, and it just leads to a lot of degeneracy within the gameplay that I, I would rather be able to log in whenever I feel like it and just level for fun um, or level with some friends of mine rather than feeling like if I don't do everything now, I I'm missing out, right? Uh, stop that. We don't need that shit. The game is good. Trust in your game. The problem that I have with FOMO, I should probably explain why FOMO is such a big problem for me, I feel like, and this is something that I've had a problem with Blizzard for a while now, but I said the exact same thing in Shadowlands. The fact that Torghast held legendary weapons, to me, looked like a sign of insecurity from Blizzard. Blizzard was so insecure about Torghast, about the ability of Torghast to attract a player base, that they felt the need to add a must-have effect to it. So you have to do Torghast or else. Rather than just making it and then trusting that it will find its audience and its audience will enjoy what they find there. This is similar to that. FOMO is exactly that. 
you're you don't trust the fact that players will actually enjoy this the players will actually do this because it's fun and now you create this fomo event that sort of you know even if players don't want to do this they're going to feel forced to do it because it's only limited time and it's sort of like well that's not how mmos work you can't make stuff and then force people into it the whole point of an mmo is to try and design it open enough that everyone finds something that they enjoy but overall i love this i love the idea of this i i approve of everything in this you know what ladies and gentlemen massive massive thumbs up to blizzard for this we may actually play this on stream yeah this is cool